what the hell is the government doing right now in their research into this stuff that we don't even know about? Yeah. Because we didn't know about MK Ultra until the church hearing, the church, um, the, the, the stuff came out in 1975. The church commission, yeah. 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 Um, so like, and that stuff was buried, you know, with Charles Manson and all that. No one knew about any of that till way later. I wonder like, what could they be doing now that we won't find out until uh -huh. 15, 20 years from now? Yeah. If that, if we even ever find out, right? Well, as you mentioned, you know, the budget uh, that, you know, the government has got for, you know, research you know, grants is, is uh, immeasurable. $27 million to the University of North Carolina to study how to take the trip out of psychedelics to heal soldiers from PTSD, PTSD and uh, like combat fatigue. Non-psychedelic psychedelics. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. A, they are supposed to stimulate neuroplasticity and neurogenesis with, mm. without the trip. Yeah, there's, there's one which is a, a c compound similar to Ibogaine called TBG or mm. Tabernathalog, and I think that's being uh, studied in humans now. Yeah, finally, it's one of these non-psychedelic psychedelics. Do you think that you can get, like, okay, it's a super placebo? It it could be, and it might be as effective as, you know, like, for example, Prozac. But do you think you can still get the effect that you get from psychedelics with? Because I feel like the I feel like the trip yeah. is is like the major component of it that gives you that effect. Right. Well, I feel like you can't have the psychedelic without the trip. Uh, well, I know, and that's still a point of raging controversy, actually, even within the academic community. Mm -hmm. uh, is the subjective experience necessary? You, you know, my feeling is that the non-psychedelic ones will be like super Prozacs and very helpful in most people who don't want to have a trip. Um, and the drugs that continue you know, causing trips will be used for the more difficult cases. Mm. You know, so you have a higher chance of responding, but also a higher chance of adverse effects. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason, uh, you know, that uh, you'd only use it in you know, cases that don't respond to non-psychoactive ones. Have you ever heard of any sort of use of psychedelics on the battlefield and not being used sort of post-combat PTSD, like as far as like enhancing people with like visual mm -hmm. acuity, edge detection, yeah. and more accuracy and stuff like this? Yeah, I've I've read accounts, yeah, but I don't know if they're really you know, based on objective data, but it you know, may be those are the kind of studies that are occurring behind the scenes. Travis sent me an article about this guy named Dana Beal. Yeah, I know Dana. Very, very nice Oh, guy. really? Yeah, quite a character. And um, I think in this article, it's explained how he was trying to take Iboga from Africa to and fly it to Ukraine to use with soldiers fighting in the Ukrainian Russian war right. to give to these Russian sol or these Ukrainian soldiers, but they weren't just using they were using it as like a way to get people back out there, right? Like if they're if they're experiencing combat fatigue or PTSD, they can get them on this Ibo Iboga or Ibogaine and then like turn and burn, like get them right back out into the battlefield. Yeah. Or even enhance their mm. their combat skills. Yeah, I think smaller doses would be like a microdose. You like a microdose. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. And it could, you know, theoretically enhance you know fighting ability. At the same time though, you know, it might also affect you know somebody's you know desire to fight. Oh, is this from the article? Yeah, Cannabis activist and advocate for Ibogaine traveled to Ukraine to promote the use of Ibogaine for treating war veterans, right? This is all about the uh, PTSD. You mm -hmm. can turn soldiers... Oh, he believes... <laughs> Beal believes that you can use Ibogaine to turn soldiers into super soldiers mm -hmm. and has been actively campaigning for its use in Ukraine despite facing legal challenges in the United States. And then he was arrested. Mm. Yeah, he's been in and out of jail. Currently on bail. So if I was the military industrial complex, I would be trying to figure out how to, I would be throwing the most money on how to weaponize psychedelics. Yeah. And they've been doing it. I mean, they, we know they did it all throughout the Cold War because they used Manson, right, to to basically stain the psychedelic movement, right? They, they tried to... Yeah, did you see the movie Jacob's Ladder? No. Uh, it's about uh, BZ. Uh, which was used on soldiers in Vietnam. BZ? BZ something, yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, l- look at Jacob's Ladder. See if you can find that, Steve. Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, yeah Tim Roth, I think. Tim. B- Tim. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's BZ. Three. Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins, yeah. 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 It's a great movie. Uh, 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 yeah, You've so seen this, Steve? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a classic, man. Three. I'm not even going to try to say that. Yeah, Quinn Selene. <laughs> uh, benzylate. A glycosate anti-chlorinogenic clinager. Anti-cholinergic. Cholinergic. That causes powerful hallucinations and altered behavior. Portrayed uh, as chemical warfare agent that leads soldiers to experience nightmarish visions and lose control of their actions. This is this was like a, a non-fiction uh, no, no, it's... Oh, uh, this was a... Okay. Yeah, live action, I guess. Well, yeah, you know, so I think, you know, giving soldiers, you know, psychedelics is fraught. I mean, what's the guarantee? Yeah, what's the guarantee they're not just going to all, like, drop their weapons and give each other hugs? Right, <laughs> right. But what you don't... you So with, with microdoses, you don't experience a psychedelic effect. But I've never really microdosed. I've done it a couple times, but from what I hear from people who microdose all the time is that it's it's a stimulant, right? Yeah, well, which is why I think a microdose of Ibogaine might make you know, soldiers more alert mm-hmm. and able you know, uh, you know, to endure more discomfort. Mm. It would be far better than using methamphetamines, which is uh, which uh, the Russian soldiers are taking. Yeah. They're taking Captagon. Captagon, a very interesting compound, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is basically just a, it's like a, it's not a methamphetamine, but it's a strong amphetamine, I think. Yeah, it's a stimulant, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. super stimulant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, wasn't that like really an important source of income, you know, for one of the countries there? You know, Captagon exports. I think it was coming from Syria, right? Oh, okay, right. And Syria and Russia were close allies, so I think they're somehow exporting that. Russia was buying the Captagon from Syria. Oh. Isn't that what um, Norman Oler was explaining to us? Oh, well, you know, this uh, reminds me of, I've been wanting to mention that uh, the book by Philip K. Dick, uh, the th- the stigmata of Palmer Eldridge, the three stigmata of Palmer Eldridge. It's a mm-hmm. book by Philip K. Dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you familiar with that? I'm it, familiar with P. K. Dick, but I'm not familiar with that book. Yeah, it's a competition. For What's the name of it again? Sorry. The three stigmata, three stigmata. of Palmer Eldridge. It's a novel that uh, describes, you know, like a war for dominion. Uh, of the you know, psychedelic market on planet Earth between a you know, Terran psychedelic and one from an interest, an interstellar uh, oh, really? location. Yeah, you know, so you, you, the one that's made on Earth uh, puts people into a, a, like a the world of Perky Pat, who is uh, in a dollhouse, and you interact with the figures in the dollhouse, and a lot of people spend time in that space. Hmm. Uh, you know, with the compound that's made on Earth. And, you know, the one that you know, comes in from interstellar space is totally weird. You take it once, and you, you never come down. Oh, wow. You come down, but that's just part of the trip. Yeah, it just goes on and on. It's really just this nightmarish, uh, you know, limbo state. You know, so Captagon, methamphetamine, uh, you know, there's all this, you know, competition for what's the... You know what's going to be, you know, the drug that everyone is taking, along mm. the lines of you know, like you know, Brave New World, even right, right, yeah, and so on. The amphetamines, <clears throat> I mean, basically, the Nazis proved that the amphetamines didn't work, right? Because they wanted to do this blitz. They thought that they could put their soldiers on, which they did. They put them all on these like super strong pervitin methamphetamine pills. Pervitin, yeah, yeah. And then they uh, they were awake for twenty days straight, and then they were just burned out at the end of it. Well, they're just burned out. Yeah, it might help for a short period of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of you know the towns in uh, you know New Mexico I worked in uh, has a big oil and gas industry, mm-hmm. and I worked uh, at one of the you know, clinics in that town. Yeah, and I you know, saw a number of the workers, uh, and. You know, when they started work, they were given a they were given a you know lunchbox, you know, with an apple and um, a sandwich and methamphetamine. What? Um, in order to help them get through eighteen hour shifts, you know, like on a regular basis. When was this? Uh, this was, you know, two thousand. 
four, two thousand six. Wow. Is that legal? Uh, I don't think so. No, no. 